if you're ever visiting the area and see this unusual vintage looking spaceship coming at you, don't panic. You're not in Area 51. As a matter of fact, if you follow it down this dirt road, you'll come to one of the most creative places in the country and the home to the Deco Liner. The person behind this original creation is Randy Grubb, a normal looking person, but underneath that normality lies a very imaginative creative mind with the skills and talents to bring his ideas to fruition. We asked Randy where the idea for the Deco Liner came from. The Deco Liner was actually inspired, I think of it as Flash Gordon's motorhome. You know, Flash is getting older, he's not doing too much interstellar work anymore. Those re-entries were kind of hard on him, and he needed a good low earth orbit vehicle. So I think of it as a 1940s vehicle. Everything in it should be period correct from somewhere around 1940. So I actually got to study a group of vintage travel trailers, 1933 to about 1937, the early, the early Boluses, uh, the predecessor to Airstream, uh, the Curtis Wrights, the Spartans, those were a big influence going into the design of the Deco Liner. The front end was a unique piece that came into the sculpture um, and it really spoke to me that this was the right front end for the Deco Liner. If that front end looks somewhat familiar, well, you're somewhat dating yourself. Where did the inspiration come from to build this unique, one-of-a-kind vehicle? What we're doing here is actually based on coach building. Uh, back in the 1920s uh, and before that, all cars were hand-built. Before Henry Ford started uh, stamping them out, virtually all cars were hand-built. For instance, a Duesenberg, you bought a chassis. Not a complete car, you bought a chassis. And then you went to a body builder and they designed the body with you and they hammered out that body for your car. Virtually all Duesenbergs were handmade one of a kind cars. That was very common. That's where my coach building craft and the history comes from that, that history and that background. Carrying that forward, uh, it was about 15 years ago that I started to take classes from uh, Ron Covell Professor Hammer on how we actually take flat sheets of metal and hammer them into these compound curves that we can build fenders with. I have a long history in car building that, that stretches back to actually when my dad brought home a Model A when I was eight years old. And he taught me to weld when I was about 10 years old. And I actually started to build my first car when I was about 12 years old. So born in Southern California into hot rod culture and having a father that really shared that passion with me um, was really where I got the bug and uh, that uh, serious medical condition has done nothing but get worse and worse over the years and where we are today is um, I don't want to cut up an old car, I want to start with a clean sheet of paper and actually hammer all the components out from scratch. It's incredibly time consuming. Something like the Deco Liner represents almost 5,000 hours of labor out of these hands. So it's not a light undertaking, but I feel very, very fortunate and very, very lucky to be able to spend the time to create these unique one-of-a-kind sculptures. We'll get back and take a good look at the Deco Liner, but first, we have to take this short commercial break. When Bedford launched Aquacam, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv.
Welcome back. The deco liner is a unique work of art or sculpture, and you would virtually have to spend a whole day just looking at all the details. So we asked Brandy to describe a few of them to us. The stairs up the back are how we get to the flying bridge, but they also allow a lot of light into the deco liner. The risers of the stairs actually have glass in them, and that's done for a variety of reasons. It lets light in, but it also allows the driver to see out the back using a traditional uh, rear view mirror in the traditional spot. As you know, most of the time when you're driving a square motorhome, you've got tail whip to worry about. The back of the de deco liner, because it's necked in, exhibits none of that but it would make difficult to see the, the back of the deco liner using side mirrors so the glass in the staircase allows you to see out the back and makes it very very easy to drive even through heavy traffic. Now for the best part let's take a look at the inside of the deco liner. So the whole deco liner is cut from the structure is cut from three quarter inch solid plate aluminum. These were water jetted and then hand routered and a lot of finessing to get this nice finish. Um, they be, the, the holes are there to get to the back side of the rivet. These are actually the bucking access to buck those rivets through. So they're functional and designed in one. All right, so here we are in the front of the deco liner where we have a nice little seating area. This is actually a vintage table that's color coordinated with the interior. This is our kind of our little entertainment center up here. We've got vintage 52 Pontiac speaker grills in a 1953 Oldsmobile dashboard that's been turned upside down. This little metal cover hides the Pioneer stereo. And in the lower part of the front seating, we've got our heat and air conditioning center right here with all the controls and the vents. We are in the back of the deco liner and there's a couple really neat things about it. You can see the glass risers in the stairs, which really allow great vision out and look at all the light it lets in. It's really great. I'm sitting on a futon. The futon is set up as a couch right now, but it folds backwards into a bed, which gives you over seven foot of bed length. Underneath the futon is a large storage area. In front of that, uh, we've got our little kitchenette area with our cabinet which features uh, a little wine rack and a little stove is in that box and just enough storage just uh, you know for the essentials things like your shaker and then over here we've got your ice chest vintage ice chest the real deal the ice chest was a vintage piece and it had this great deep stamp profile front that was so great that I actually cut the back panel off of it and that became the door for the cabinet over here this is actually the back panel off the ice chest. So here we are in the downstairs driving compartment in the deco liner. It's set up just as any normal motorhome would be. Steering wheel, brakes, everything just like normal. But what's unique about the deco liner is on a nice day, hey, all you gotta do is pop the steering wheel off, reach above your head where the steering shaft has been stored, slide the steering shaft connection on. Now we're mechanically coupled up to the upper, upper stair. We put our safety locking pin in. Now it's absolutely safe. There's no way for this coupling to come undone. The only other whiz-bang safety item that we have is the electronic shifter. This is a master shift. This is where the shifter is located, behind this panel, and it's an electronic shifting keypad. You push the button, it goes into gear. Once it's in gear, there's no way for it to go into neutral park or reverse without having your foot on the brake. So it's a safety feature. All of this is upstairs. The shifter, the brake, the gas, and you take your steering wheel up and we can drive it from the roof. All right, so our staircase just folds down. Now we walk on up the stairs. We just sit down, attach the steering wheel up top, replace our locking pin, and now we're able to drive it from the roof. Our master shift, shifters down here, brake, gas, parking brake, everything we need, and a commanding view of the road. You actually have excellent visibility up here, your mirrors work great, and obviously you can see as far down the road as you need to see. And this is that sand cast dash that I talked about, carved from wood and then sand cast. 
featuring that vintage Stuart Warner survey speedometer. This is definitely the place to be on a nice day, up top.